Hello, writers, and welcome back to Spooky Writes, your channel all about writing. I'm your host, who is secretly a ghost, Kamal Onor. Now, today we're going to be talking all about how to trust your decisions as a writer, how to trust the choices that you are making in the process of writing. So, let's head into the storm. It's the raven's call, the werewolf's howl, the vampire's bite. You search through the woods for safety, but all you find is... Okay, right. <laughs> so first off, let me say that if I sound any different today, it's because I'm getting over a little bit of food poisoning. It wasn't a fun time, but I'm, I'm feeling a lot better now. So today we're going to be diving into that question of, of choices, because especially when we start out writing, we might feel like a story can go in any direction. We might have our protagonist character, we might have an opening sentence, but we might not have any real clear idea of where that story is going to go. And therefore we end up feeling just paralysis by analysis, paralysis by choice. And there was, a, there was a very interesting study that was done called the, called the Jam and Jelly study, where a bunch of researchers basically set up two identical shops. They set up two identical shops. One sold six jams and jellies. The other sold a, larger, a large number of jams and jellies. I think it was 26 or more jams and jellies. And what they found out was that more people were able while more people were interested in the 26 jams and jellies, the one that had more people who actually made purchases was the smaller choice option of six jams and jellies. And so this is why when you're writing a story, you might feel like it has to, you might feel like you need to use every single idea that comes to mind. You might need to say, but I had an idea for my character to go back home and visit his or her mother. I've, I had an idea where my character meets up with an old friend and they have this big lengthy conversation and this is all, these are all decisions of what you need to include in your story and you need to understand what is vital to the story. You can't, you can't include every, every single idea into your story. You can't include every single idea that comes to your mind in your novel. Not all of it is going to fit. And so how do we as authors, how do we decide what sticks and what needs to end up on the cutting room floor? And a lot of authors in the beginning stages of, write, of writing, and a lot of authors in the beginning stages of writing tend to seek validation. They tend to bring their writing to other people and say, do you, how do you think I should write this story? And at a certain point, you need to take full ownership of the story that you're writing. You need to trust your own writing instincts. You need to trust your own writing decisions and you need to stick with these decisions. Now this doesn't mean that you can't change it later in editing. This is one of the great things about editing and revising your story is that once you've written your story from start to finish, you can start to hone down and you can you can you can kind of shave off the excess. You can you can understand what your story is actually about. Is your story actually about the relationship that he or he or she has with his with his or her parent or his or her friend and you can then decide do you need to include that scene where they meet up or do you include a scene of them talking on the phone or whatever decision you decide to make within your story but you're it's impossible to include every single last idea that you have on a story so again some of it is just not going to fit along with the idea of bringing your work to people along with your idea along with the idea of bringing your work to people and asking them for their feedback and saying, can you validate my decision of this character doing this thing of, of the story going in this direction? It's very similar to when you're, when you're studying creative writing or when you're studying writing at any level, you get used to turning in your work to a professor, to a teacher, to a mentor, and you end up relying on their feedback of whether or not your writing is good or whether or not it needs to be completely revised and and as so, and as someone who went through 7 years of formal education in terms of undergrad and a master's degree in creative writing 
I remember when I graduated, I was incredibly fearful of presenting new writing that I had not yet kind of that that had not yet been vetted through a professor that had not yet been vetted through someone else and it took me a while to get comfortable writing and it took me a while to get comfortable writing stories and judging it on my own merit and making the and making my own decisions that this is how the story wants to be this is the, this is the story that I want to tell and you need to just keep reevaluating your writing and the more writing that you do the more confidence you will gain and the more that you rely on other people the less confidence you'll gain so you have to take ownership of your story and you have to work on judging your own work now i was very fortunate that some of my early work that i had presented to to teachers to to programs some of that work was was accepted for publication this gave me more confidence and as those publications rolled in i started to gain more and more confidence one of the first short stories that i ever had published was a short story called the great wolf and this is linked in my website which you can find in the description down below if you want to check out any of my publications by all means go to the description click on the link to my personal website and then go to publications and you will find everything that I have published throughout the years. But I think this is one of the big reasons why so many people end up not continuing to write, why so many people go through an undergrad degree in writing or they go through a master's degree in writing and they come out on the other side and there isn't that expectation that you have to meet certain expectations that there is there is no, there's nothing forcing you to write. There's nothing there that's telling you you have to you have to submit something by this deadline or else you'll get a poor grade or you won't be able to continue in the program. And so and so at a certain point you have to give yourself your own ultimatums. You have to say, I have to write this story because it's important to me. And so many people will tend to to post onto the internet and they'll they'll go to sites like Reddit or what or Wattpad or these other fan sites where people are sharing ideas and they'll try and get validation that way I've already done a video talking all about why you should not be posting to sites like Wattpad that will be linked somewhere above I can never figure out which corner it is but but the, but the idea is that at a certain point you have to trust yourself you have to understand what you want the story to be because you as the author you are telling a story that is part of your creative vision Again, it doesn't have to be, it does not have to be perfect the first time. It doesn't have to be perfect the second, the third, or the seventeenth time. You can rewrite your story as many times as you possibly want, as many times as it takes to get it right. And you need to be the one who judges what is right for your writing. So hopefully that was helpful. And as always, keep it spooky. And of course, for those of you who stayed through the whole video, here's your writing prompt. I jumped on the horse ready to blank. So set your timer and start writing. Thank you so much.